Thanks very much, everyone, for joining me once again. Thought it'd be a good opportunity to discuss the Pakistan squad for the series against Ireland and England. Um, eighteen-man squad announced. Uh, they're playing three T20Is versus Ireland, and then they follow that up with four against England. How this affects the T20 World Cup squad is that um, the selection committee are going to announce the T20 squad for the World Cup after the first T20I against England. All a little bit bizarre, really, because um, most of the countries are announcing their provisional squads now for the World Cup. Baxter have announced a squad for the England and Ireland series, but halfway through that, they're going to announce the World Cup squad. So what if you're in the England and Ireland squad and then your name doesn't come up in the World Cup squad? Bit of a kick in the teeth, really, isn't it? Which is going to happen because, um, as I say, 18 players have been picked for the Ireland and England series and um, obviously only 15 are going to be picked for the uh, World Cup squad. So I guess it's a case of uh, let's see what you can do against Ireland and um, that first T20I against England. So over to the players. Let's have a look at the squad. Babar Azam, Abrar Ahmed, um, Azam Khan, Fakir Zaman, Harris Rauf, uh, Hassan Ali, Iftikhar Ahmed, Imad Wasim, Abbas Afridi, um, Rizwan, um, Mohamed Irfan Khan, we've got Nassim Shah, Saim Ayub, Salman Ali Aga, um, Shadab Khan, Mohamed Amir, Shane Shah Afridi and Usman Khan. As I say, 18 players. 18 of Pakistan's cream of the crop. Is it really? One or two dubious selections, I would say, or one or two questionable selections. I'm sure everybody has an opinion um, regarding these squads and I'm sure, given the nature of Pakistani cricket lovers and followers, everybody would have an opinion and everybody would come up with a different um, 18 man squad. A couple of players that I feel are a little bit lucky to be in this squad. Why? Again, this is my opinion. You might agree with it, you might not agree with it. Azam Khan, why does he keep getting picked? Yes, we know he can hit a big cricket ball. We know he's a big hitter. Every now and then he does well with the bat, mainly in T20 leagues, because for Pakistan, he's done absolutely nothing. Um, 29 runs. In seven innings, average of 4.83. Now, I can imagine if it had been a number of other players, they wouldn't be back in the Pakistan shirt again. Azam Khan's been injured. He's had fitness problems. He had fitness problems at the training camp as well. Um, his international form has been pathetic. And there's only so much patience that the selectors can have with a guy. Probably last chance saloon. He could be one of the guys who, if he doesn't do well against Ireland and in that first match against England, he could be dropped. I think he's very, very lucky to be in the squad, really. Because, um, as I say, he's really struggling with that step up from T20 leagues to international cricket. Over to you, Azam. Hassan Ali. The media release from the Pakistan Cricket Board says that he's an experienced cricketer. He's had a good PSL, no doubt about that. And um, he's got, obviously, experience in English conditions. Um, he's over here playing for Warwickshire at the moment in county cricket alongside Amr Jamal. His last T20I was 9th of September 2022 against Sri Lanka. So what's that? Um, about three, eight, 20 months ago. So he's not played for Pakistan in T20 cricket for 20 months. Surprising, really, that they brought him back. I like Hassan's efforts. I think he always gives 100%. PSL, yeah, if we're going on PSL form, then 14 wickets at an economy rate of 8.26 in a struggling team like Karachi Kings. Commendable effort. Um, I guess he's in for Zaman Khan. It was a shootout between Hassan Ali and Zaman for this squad. Um, Zaman, 11 wickets in the PSL economy rate of 9.87. International cricket, he's only taken seven wickets in 10 matches. Never taken more than one wicket in a T20I for Pakistan. Zaman Khan, last few matches, he struggled with the ball. I guess the mystery and the surprise element of Zaman has disappeared a little bit. He struggled, no doubt about it. Whether he deserved to be dropped, 
and replaced by Hassan Ali? Again, that's questionable. Be interested to see what the selectors have to say about dropping Zaman Khan. Maybe it's a little kick up the backside for him to say, well, look, you're not an automatic pick. Just because you were involved in a couple of PSL wins with Lahore Kalungas doesn't mean that you get automatically picked for Pakistan. So, over to Zaman to regain some confidence and form. Um, Harris Rauf, PSL, he only took two wickets, obviously picked up that nasty injury, he only played four matches, economy rate of 9.42. If he's fit, if he's 100% fit, if he can prove that he's fit in these matches against Ireland and England, then he deserves to be selected. If there are any question marks about his fitness, about his form, then he does not deserve to be picked in the T20 World Cup squad. You can't pick players on reputation. You can't pick players on how fast they bowl. It's all about output, effort and results. If the guy Ahmed, 2024, he's been abysmal with the bat. Again, another one of those who's probably in that... Um, Last chance saloon, they say, don't they? So if he doesn't start performing soon, I'm guessing they're going to start looking at alternatives because, yes, he's a decent fielder. Yes, he can bowl one or two overs here and there, but primarily he's in the team to score runs. He's not done that in 2024. His form this year with the bat has been terrible. So let's see how that goes. Simon Yub, another. We all love Simon, don't we, We we all want him to do well. He's a fantastic cricketer. You know, he's got some brilliant shots. He's got some shots that other bat batters can only dream of playing. But ultimately, it's a results business. He can bowl a few overs. He's okay in the field. Not the best, but he's all right. Um, but it's all about scoring runs. Seems to me like he wants to play too many shots. Too often. Maybe just rein it in a little bit. Step up again from uh, domestic cricket, T20s, franchise leagues to international cricket is quite a big one. So I think he's going to have to be a little bit patient, I think. Hope he comes off. Hope he starts scoring runs because I think one or two good scores in international cricket for him, like he did at the start of his career, I think um, he'll get rejuvenated, he'll find his form and he is a match winner for Pakistan. Um, well, Sam Amir has been dropped. Interesting one, I guess. It's a battle between him and um, Abra Ahmed. Abra was very good in the PSL. Good bowler, isn't he? He's a wicket-taking bowler. But what's Osama done wrong? I guess it's down to you can only pick two leg spinners. Shadab's an automatic uh, pick, three-dimensional cricketer, excellent fielder. Um, good knowledge of the T20 format, scores vital runs um, with the bat as well. And he's um, got his mojo back with the ball. So you can't drop him. So they've uh, dropped Osama, who took 24 wickets in the PSL recently. Highest wicket taker, fantastic economy rate of 8.13. And recently against New Zealand C team, he took two for 21 in four overs. So he ended that series on a high. Confidence was high, taking wickets, good PSL, and they drop him. I think some of you out there will have something to say about why he was dropped and um, you know whether he deserved a chance or not. But again, it's all about opinions, isn't it? Obviously, the selectors have uh, banked on Abrar to do well. Again, great, great um, bowler, similar to Osama, and um, not so great in the field, of course, both of them. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, things uh, develop with Abra's career in T20s. The Caribbean wickets, the T20 World Cup, they're not the wickets of old. I remember growing up watching those great West Indian fast bowlers like Malcolm Marshall, Michael Holding, Court Courtney uh, Walsh, Kirtley Ambrose and others ripping it up on those fast, bouncy Caribbean wickets. Now, Spinners paradise a lot of these pitches, and um, I think uh, teams with a good pace bowling lineup, variety, and good spin bowling options will uh, will do well at the T20 World Cup. So as I said, the World Cup squad, fifteen players. Twenty fourth of May is the deadline, so that's just over three weeks. And um, as I said before, the first T20I against England 
After that, Pakistan will be announcing their World Cup squad. Number of players is still up for grabs, I think. Um, most of the players, you can say, yeah, automatic picks, but I reckon there's still three or four places up for grabs in that uh, T20 World Cup squad. Interesting also regarding the batting order, because the man now seems uh, bedded in at number four. But he's been doing OK. I think Fucker's one of those team players who, um, if you send him at number four, he'll just go out there and do the job. Others, if you send them at number four, they won't be happy. They'll whine, they'll moan, they'll whinge. Why am I batting at number four? I'm an opener. I'm number three. I'm number five. Why are you sending me in at number four? That's not um, uh, playing for the team, is it? That's playing for yourself. So, Rizwan, back as well. He's fit. Obviously, uh, him and Irfan Khan missed some of the matches against New Zealand C team. And um, they've proved themselves to be uh, fully fit now. So, fingers crossed they um, they do well as well and um, remain fit. And uh, I think Irfan Khan is a good cricketer. I like him. He's uh, He's got a little bit of X factor about him. Big hitter. He can bat. He can play the role of the finisher as well. And above all, he's fantastic in the field, which makes a lot of difference. So thank you very much for your time, folks. Really appreciate that. And um, I'll just have to answer my doorbell there, which you probably heard. And uh, let's hope Pakistan do well in Ireland and England. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.